vulnerability of the sea? Uh, this this site is uh, exposed to the sea. Uh, the bay that that we're in, uh, you can see the uh, uh, tide line with the seaweed coming round. Unlike so many other sites in Orkney where you have exposures of archaeology that are in cliffs, uh, the archaeology runs under the, uh, the stone beach that we see there, and the sea is coming in and sucking out all the finer sediments, and then. The big storm events come in, the big waves crash in, and, the, the, and that violent force drags out the other stones. So we're losing this site uh, at quite a significant rate. Well, we've still got quite a bit here to see, and the interesting thing is that, obviously, uh, and start that again, and the interesting thing is that it's been occupied for such a long time. I mean, if we're standing here behind us, is the Apictish Smithy, which must be quite a rare thing. It is. Um, uh, we, we have evidence of metal working, but mainly uh, what we see is the dumping of material. Um, it, and it's incredibly rare to actually have a, a working surface where we can actually look at how the smith operated and how he used the space within the building. And that's uh, um, a, a, a first in many ways. Uh, we've, we've, we've got the uh, uh, steps going down into the into a corridor the the doorway with all the fittings for the for the door we know which way the door opened we, we know it could be locked from the inside and then inside we've, the building we've got a hearth stone protecting the hearth and in situ we've got two uh, stone anvils and what Jerry's been able to do uh, it's been quite remarkable he's used a, a XRF machine uh, uh, to be able to analyse the floor. So we've, we've, we've been able to do scientific analysis of the floor using that and magnetic uh, uh, differences in, in the soil as well at a minute level. And we can tell where the metalworking occurred. So we know where the smith would, would have stood, where the person with the bellows to create the heat, where they would have stood. So, so it's a remarkable piece of um, it's a remarkable uh, story that we're getting out of it. And the other side, to the other extent, is the well, a lot of Iron Age work, we think, but on top of what I suppose can be most easily so best described as another maze how and you think you've got a, a burial tomb in here. Yes, we, we, we think from the architecture going around with the casement walls and the passageway through, going through that we, we've got a, a passage grave. Uh, we, we don't know exactly uh, the form of it because we've got this later, as you say, later Iron Age material um, on the top which we're excavating at the moment. And uh, th that was uh, um, quite uh, a surprise because on the seaward side uh, we didn't have any traces of that, though we did have some, um, some uh, stonework which we, we thought may have been Iron Age material but we didn't know quite how much there would be there and it's, uh, it, it, it's outstripped our expectations in many ways. So much to find there yet, you hope to get into the tomb eventually, hopefully. Yes, we're, 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 we're hoping but uh, what we have to do is take the site apart stratigraphically and uh, the evidence that we've got is for a substantial building surviving there. Um, and that is very vulnerable to the sea, so, so we've got to treat all the archaeology equally. It must be difficult on a site like this, which has been occupied for such a long time, because everything's so mixed up, everything's kind of one rolls into the other, it must be difficult to, to separate them out then. It, it is, it's a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. And the remarkable thing about Orkney is the use of stone uh, from uh, the Neolithic onwards, and uh, and uh, it's so different from from the archaeology, say in Wessex, for example, where you you you, you have just features that are cut into the ground surviving. Here we we've actually got a settlement mound, so it's generation after generation living on the same site, rebuilding, pulling buildings down, reusing stone. So we've got this this continuum of settlement, uh, but that makes a really complex archaeological sequence to interpret. And one that you don't really have long to do, if in all reality, there's not a lot of time left here. 
Uh, that's right, we're halfway through this season. Um, uh, we're coming back next year. Uh, and uh, what we hope to do is to uh, get into this season to get to, to a point where we can uh, uh, have a, a much larger uh, season next year.